I'm not here to uh, opinionate or opine about some other party's campaign, but what I think is a very serious issue in this campaign. And I'm welcome any questions on that line. If you want to go somewhere else, then ask someone else. All right? Was your speech here today inspired by John Bradford's audio speech? No, with the greatest respect, uh, I was the one that made these matters very important in politics a long, long time ago, a long time before you ever heard Don Brown. Can, can you explain what it is that you prevented Well, an intervention that would bust the then existing arrangement with respect to the Treaty of Waitangi and Ihimata, and then open up every other treaty claim across this country. Well, why wouldn't you agree to this agreement? Because it would allow them to go ahead and do what they had committed themselves not to do in the pre-debate uh, or discussions uh, before we even got underway. We had a signed document saying they wouldn't do a thing like that, and they were about to breach it, so we stopped them. Were you race today? Well, if you want to make a provocative statement like that and say you don't care about this country's future, you go right ahead. But I'm here saying how important it is for everybody in this country, including Māori, to have a unity pathway forward. We can't go ahead with this business. I've said it all my career. Don't come along and be shallow and say I'm race baiting, because it couldn't be more false. It was the question. You haven't said that you're not. No, no, we don't have negatives like, negatives like that. You wouldn't be allowed in a court of law. You wouldn't be allowed in any halfway academic circumstance. And I am most certainly not going to allow you to come on here and try and derail a very, very important speech. What will happen is it will cost it. The people of this country are fortune. It will not resolve them much at all, except to open up every Treaty of Waitangi settlement. This matter has already been settled on the Treaty of Waitangi. How much of a fortune? Pardon? How, what type of fortune? What are we well, there's doing? no way of calculating what the cost will be, because there will be, a, as I said, a domino effect, and the fallout will be huge. I said so to the Labour Party then, and I'm saying it to you now. Your speech today is being compared to Don Brash's Oriba speech. Oh, with the greatest respect, if you want to compare somebody that came and went like it didn't even exist in politics, then you go right ahead. But it's not true. Why don't you just insult somebody? Why don't you just come along and say, I'd rather insult you, Mr. Peters, than answer, than ask a sensible question? His speech was famously a one law for all speech, which was essentially what your speech was too, wasn't it? No, no. New Zealand First has been arguing one law for all from the day we were formed down on the 18th of July at, uh, at 1993 at Alexander Park. Go and read the speech. It's in our formative principles. Please do not tell me that somebody else copying us is the originator of it or the founder of it. Why did you choose to do that speech here and today? Well, because uh, we are in a campaign and every day we've got things to announce. I chose Oroa because this is the place I sought to announce it. There's nothing special about that. Have you got a problem with the people of Oroa hearing the truth? I, is New Zealand first? Is come New over, Zealand, former Zealand mayor, come over and tell these people that you've got a right to hear the truth as much as anybody else. Mr. Peters, have you been to Ihimaka? Well, uh, lately, no. In the past, most definitely. Have you been part of Yes, I have. What would your solution to the dispute be? Well, this, the matter was solved before the Prime Minister intervened. So currently? It had been, no, no. It had been solved. To think that a bunch of interlopers that don't have mana whenua getting your attention as the media because you don't understand Maoridan or its history can get away with that is so wrong. How My party's solved? against it. How was it solved? There was a stalemate. No, no, well, excuse me, there wasn't a stalemate. What you had was a bunch of interlopers turning up and protesting, led by somebody out of Western Australia who, as the Komato said, doesn't even belong here. And you decided in the media to believe her and not believe the people. Our job is to stop that sort of behaviour in this country and ensure we go forward with unity based on sound principles, whether it be with Māori tanga or other cultural precepts or principles. But it was a stalemate because the protesters... Look, I'm sorry, I'm not, look, with the greatest respect, I'm not interested in some media person coming so along and, and showing, t telling me terribly how ignorant they are of this matter. With respect, some of us have lived in this world to do with Maori land and traditional ownership for a long, long time. We have ancestors that have as well. Please do not tell me that what happened, happened at Ihimata by way of Tanya, uh, Tanya Newton and her crowd was in any way what Maori women could do. It's is just New so wrong. Is New Zealand First going there on a Kiwi Iwi race issues because New Zealand First is getting desperate? Oh, look, if you want to come along and demonstrate 
your inability to understand the important issues in this country, you go right ahead. When the election's over, you'll see about people who think like you. In this sense, this country cannot go forward with the kind of disjunctive, racist understanding or misunderstanding of Maori. What you're really saying to all Maori people and Maori tradition is, we don't care about you, we care about wokeism, wokeism and popularism and separatism and every other thing that's bad for our society. If you want to be a journalist that does that, you go right ahead. But I tell you what, you're not going to win on this election, and that's the reason why New Zealand first, and it's winning, it's so important. I've heard your question, that's it. Yes. Um, Mr. Peters, in one of the public questions today, they did talk about the COVID response, and you actually answered with a DHB response and what New Zealand First will be doing about that. I want to ask about the Simpson report. What do you make of that report about reducing the number of DHBs? It's a very re good report, but it doesn't go nearly far enough. And I never thought it would because, uh, with the greatest respect to Heather Simpson, who I've got a lot of time for, she had one difficulty. It was Labour that set them up. It was Labour that set them up, arguing that health needed democratisation. What we had was massive duplication and less health. And so we want a proper re-examining, using the uh, symptom report as a base, but I do not think it goes nearly far enough. And do you think that the board members should be chosen by a minister rather than a public election? No, they should be chosen by merit and talent and ability. That would be a good start. For someone else's story, um, Labour and the Greens are saying that New Zealand first stopped um, them fulfilling their promise of normal mining and conservation land. Is that true? Well, why don't you come along with something that is true? Because it's not true. New Zealand First didn't block Labour and the Greens from preventing mining on conservation land. Uh, I don't think you understand. It's not conservation land we're talking about. It is a category of conservation land that was put there as a caretaker role, and that's all it is. It's not conservation land. And again, if you come along to ask these questions, please come along remotely informed about the law of land ownership in this country. But was that New Zealand no, no, I've had enough, actually. I've had enough. Sorry.